Today's episode is sponsored by Studio Form. Uh, Studio Form VR is currently offers, offering a discount, as you can see. Um, currently $47 for your uh, HP or Valve Index systems. It's $34.95 US as of today, 8-21-2022, plus sales tax and um, there. As you can see, one day fulfillment, um, they do, do great shipping. The packaging was phenomenal and they provide uh, support for many of the products. And I can't tell you how great I am so happy with my HP Reverb G2. I did get the larger 200 gram um, version. It balanced very well. The quality on here is just bar none, I, I, I hate to say, but I really, really did enjoy it. Um, the comfort holding the sweet spot, I really recommend you guys check these out. Uh, it's a great quality product. And, and and like I said, there are plenty of reviews you can check out on this. There are plenty of people in the community of IL2 who are currently using this. And it is phenomenal. I am not using that cross strap because I'm always slightly adjusting the center one. So, and as you can see, like how it's offset here, mine, I, you can use that to basically make sure the back end is dropped down far enough for you and that the top is held properly. So you will set the goggles on your head then you're going to basically set these two straps and, and you'll do it on the other side. You'll you kind of preset it up and then and you undo it once it's on your head, having the center strap undone and the fronts undone. Get it centered on your face perfectly. Once it's set there, then bring up the first side and then bring the other side over until it's snug like you're fitting a baseball cap over the top of your head. Um, that's the only way I can explain it, the rear strap of your baseball caps over the top of your head. That will give you a perfect fit, then lay the top strap back down. You've already got this all set up here for the cable, for the for the cord coming through, and it is perfect. It works great. Um, these actually help support too, and then it comes back to the back and goes out the back. I, I really do love the product. It is high quality. It is super soft. Um, it definitely is worth your investment if you play a lot of VR. This will make the comfort level worth every bit. It is phenomenal. I love it and um, I highly recommend it. All right, I'm starting a new video and the main thing I wanted to go over today was how to do you install OpenXR Toolkit when using the IL2 Steam version of the game. Um, I've run into this a couple different times and um, I want to point out a couple different issues that people are running into and clarify it. Now this will work if you've never installed uh, a toolkit. Uh, this will also help you install toolkit for the first time so you can watch this. But this is primarily focused for the Steam users. Um, and then here's what we're going to talk about. Number one. IL2 and Steam must be installed on your primary hard drive, drive C, wherever you have Steam and your Windows installed. If you put it on drive D, E, F, or G, it is not going to work, okay? Uh, that's number one. I have found about four people with this problem out of 200 and one of them I had brought up the comment and they we just didn't realize it until I got images I just have to do screenshots so I could see his setup and he realized immediately also that that was uh, an issue and now he's gonna have to reinstall it so if you have that problem here's a quick fix just reinstall the game onto your C drive <clears throat> take the current copy that you have go into your IL2 and once you get in there, there's only a couple files you're going to need to copy over. In your data file, you just need to copy over your startup file. That one is your CFG startup. Once you have that put uh, copied over to the new copy, that's all you'll need. And the other thing you're going to need is your input file. Just copy the whole input file over. That's all your settings for your uh, sticks and every, everything. So that'll copy over. Uh, and then you'll just need to go into your uh, game bin file and reinstall the open VR API DLLs both in your bin game and in your bin viewer okay after that you will go to the open XR toolkit of course you've already downloaded the latest before you got started 
And over here on the right, you'll see a thing about open composite. You're going to need to read this a little bit to understand what's happening. But the main thing you need to do is go to their website and scroll down. You'll see at the top all of this. So you're going to scroll all the way down. And when you get down, download and installations, system wide and you want to download and get this installed. It'll come in zipped, you'll have to unzip it, and then you'll run it. When you're up, when it's up and running, and you get it up and running, it's going to look like this. Um, so when you find it, you'll unzip it into a folder, you'll have it here, you'll run it, it'll come up, it'll allow you to switch from Steam VR to Open Composite. Now if you're using a Windows Mixed Reality headset, and you have Steam set up, this is how you undo that. That's the first step, and that will take it off You've, then we'll also have to manually, right here, download the 64-bit DLLs. And when you do, it's going to come up. It's going to give you a warning because, hey, you don't want to download this stuff. And you see I have it as a 3 because I've downloaded it before earlier. Um, so what you want to do is you'll get in here and you'll you'll basically grab that. It's not If it has a 1 or a 2 delete it you know delete the one out of there it does, cannot have that uh, that in there it has to be worded as exactly so you know just go in and rename if you had more than one download and you can't find the original for some reason just do that and it'll say do you want to replace this one no and i'm going to say yes whatever so anyway it's going to rename it to three because i have it downloaded but you want to take that out when you put it in all right so that's that. Now the last thing you're also going to want to do is in your Windows Mixed Reality, you're going to go into your settings and don't use the voice activation. It can freeze your whole game up. Uh, just so FYI, if you accidentally say like IP or something like that, it'll lock the game. You won't even be able to fly and whatever you're doing, that, that was the last thing you're going to do. Um, so uncheck all of these. That's important. The big one is you do not want uh, Mixed Reality automatically starting and that will detach it now if you have a windows mix if you have a steam vr system skip this step leave it on the steam switch it to steam and leave it there um don't don't switch it from there that's going to be your oculuses anything that runs on the steam systems um so there's that all right so we got those two major things done that sets that up now we're going to talk about how you get the best graphics in the game okay and i'm going to point out a couple different things that you are not going to see um and you can test it and then let the proof in the pudding is what i always say so i will copy paste this in there so people can read it but if you go through and look your detailed res is 21 to 2160 that is the resolution of the hp reverb g2 if you know the resolution of your goggles Try setting it to that. You'll see a major improvement uh, to spotting the dots, clarity, etc. Um, the next big one. This is just a monkey de uh, a default. Is what I call it. It's basically causing the computer program because this is a 2D flat screen game to ignore any errors that it finds in the game. So once I've done this, this we found this out in Windows Mixer uh, within Windows uh, Flight Sim a couple years ago. And it, no, Microsoft knew about it, and we, we just kind of playing around with it. Everyone who's done this, no problems. Uh, if you are going to go in and play flat screen because you play tanks or whatever, that's just the resolution of your flat screen. Um, but the, to, by doing this, for some reason, you get higher frame rates and cleaner play. I don't know why, but it works just like it did in the other games. Um, last one you want to look at and to make sure you have that set up those are all the basics you'll go through and, and look at everything else there i am using the post sharpening in the game that's the sharpening and does you can play with that on and off i like it on now with the new open xr update that has just come out uh for windows mixed reality the current version here this is the latest version. I just got it. I put out a video earlier on uh, updating it, but if this is the only video you're supposed to see, just go into your Windows Microsoft Store app. Uh, once you're in there, you will be able to go to your library and you will find Windows Mixed Reality as one of those and just make sure you get that updated. It doesn't update automatically every time. And uh, this particular time, 8 of 2022, uh, you had to manually update it in order to get the latest version. There were some crashes that were popping up. If you noticed that this weekend, Saturday uh, um, on the 20th, that was part of probably some of the issues I noticed happening there. Uh, everything else is good there. 
So with that all set up, you are going to notice amazing graphics within the game. And then the last thing I'm going to look show you is my NVIDIA settings. So we're going to open that up and we're going to go through the settings. There is in the new Windows Open XR Mixed Reality, not the toolkit, the latest update for them, there was an improvement with um, motion reprojection. I will be testing that. If I see anything positive, I will put out another video later um, uh, going over that. But right now, no motion reprojection because it hasn't worked in the past in the game. So my settings, you have to make sure that you go in and find the um, the link which is located in your bin game files you need to make sure you click that executable so every time you start the game it will link all of your settings to that so it's always set don't rely on your global settings to do this it's not uh, reliable and it doesn't uh, always you know load properly let's just say it that way um, so starting at the top I'm going to say it really fast, but I'll go down slowly. Uh, application controlled for the first AFXAA off. Uh, gamma, I like it on with it off. The colors are muted and you can't see anything. Anti aliasing mode, application controlled. Off for anti aliasing transparency, background off. GPUs all. Latency off, off. <laughs> For max frame monitor tech off multi frames mfaa off this is all flat screen stuff guys the reason i have a i have a g-sync monitor but i don't want to be running any of that anyway in fact i turned my monitors off so no problem there you should think about turning your monitor off if your refresh rate on your monitor is more than the g2 which is 90 <coughs> you're gonna find a major issue um, with it crashing, um, you'll, 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 you're, you're overheating the video card faster, so you're going to actually cause the card to peak a higher 80, 80 temp and then d down clock you while you're in game. You're going to see frame rates drops when that happens. That's the most common sign. Your frame rates literally start plummeting when that happens. Um, so that avoids a lot of that. Uh, continuing on, you guys do auto select for the rendering GPU. It's just, you know, that's fine. Maximum performance is important for the power management. Application controlled, again, we don't want to mess with any of this. Uh, the, the texture filtering, anastropic, off. Uh, you don't need that. It just causes more glitter shattering and everything else, and that was taken care of with the toolkit. Uh, allow, you don't want to clamp it. Uh, high quality, of course, that's the highest you can go up to. Uh, texture failure optimization on, that doesn't do anything in the, to hurt it, but it does give you more frame rates. I haven't seen any issues there, but if you do, play with it on and off. Threaded optimization on, that's using the multiple co uh, co uh, CPU. You're basically dumping pre-render frames into your CPU before it goes to the GPU. Most of us, if you're running a, a, a late three, four-year-old uh, CPU, five-year-old CPU, this is great. Uh, I set mine to two. Everyone is doing this. This is the best settings we have found so far. Make sure you have the vertical sync turned off. There is no vertical sync in VR um, unless you're doing motion reprojection, which is a whole different ballgame. So I'll go into a video on that later. Triple buffering. Again, you don't want you want to make sure that's off. That's an OpenGL app. This is not an OpenGL app. Do not turn that on. All right, so that's it. You'll click and save, and you're good to go. Um, your resolution, again, like mine's 144. And this is your PC screen aid resolution. What most of you are going to see in that first setting when I told you guys about the startup file, you're going to see that in your startup. Um, you see the um, detail res uh, is set, or not the detail res, but your full height and width. So those, that that's where that is. And and if you're not running the flat screen, you want to make this the default away. So if there is any program bugs you know people make mistakes there's, there's all kinds of errors that can cause and it's trying to render a certain way for a flat screen and it just avoids it all for some reason it's pretty amazing you could try it doesn't hurt doesn't harm anything and other than that i hope you guys enjoyed it i am putting a sponsored link into this it is studio form they are freaking awesome and i will have some information in below there is a discount below uh, which you will be able to go into and check it out if you want. Uh, again, Studio Form is um, a sponsored link that you know I get I, you know paid like three bucks or whatever for for each one. But it doesn't matter on that. In reality, it's more what does it do? Um, 
it phenomenally fits. Uh, you have, uh, you know, a lot of different um, options that you can go into, and it's it's pretty awesome. I, I again, I'll put a link into this when I go and talk about the update for uh, Windows Mixed Reality uh, update for OpenXR. But yeah, it the, the when you can have the goggles sit on your face and keep that sweet spot perfectly every time, and it doesn't feel like the goggles are smashing down on the front of your nose and your eyes, and you don't have to have it smashing into your eye sockets to keep it flush and not move around. It's phenomenal. So I highly recommend you guys looking at it high quality i mean the quality i was shocked i was expecting you know something whatever you never know when you buy it this was beyond quality i mean phenomenal i can't give it any more bonus but it is great they are phenomenal so definitely check it out and i hope you guys enjoyed this new video You'll be able to go into your um, toolkit, and that's where you're going to be able to see the open composite, uh, the IL2.exe showing running. These are my current settings, um, so it's all set the same in here. <laughs> this one cannot show up until you've launched the game successfully, either standalone or in the Steam version. Okay, I wanted to show you a feature in the GeForce Experience, your performance setting. Uh, you can go in and do automatic tu uh, tuning. I did mine earlier, it was 73. Uh, then you'll turn up your maximum power and temperature targets um, and your fan settings to automatic. If you turn this off and then turn it back on, it's going to begin the scanning process. You do not want to do the scanning process while you're doing anything else uh, because it's going to lower your overall. I consider this a friendly way, uh, easy user friendly to overclock. The main thing is make sure you max out the power and the temperatures. And when you're playing the game, I highly recommend you turn your fan speeds up to at least 80. Um, the noise isn't going to matter. You're not going to hear it in the game with the engines going. And it does help keep the the the, C, the, the GPU cooler, uh, preventing you from hitting that higher temp. When it when you hit the temp over 80, which is the default for this. It's like 80, I believe. Then what ends up happening is you end up downclocking your cart. So you don't want that. This gives you a little bit more leg room. It won't damage it. Again, this is all through NVIDIA. You're not doing anything fancy. It's overclocking for simple people who don't want to do all the uh, technical. So I really enjoy it. I do recommend it. I haven't had any problems, and you should probably check it out. If you do that, ATI guys, you have the same thing. You can do some bumps overclocking in there too. And uh, the software does a really good job for people who are just trying to have a good time and don't want to do all the hard work. And it's just Alt-Z to bring it up and old Z to put it down. It runs in the background. I don't recommend a lot of, of apps running in the background, but this one is a good one.